Real 92.3, LA's hip-hop and R&B. Let me tell you, man, uh, this is legendary. This, this, this doesn't happen. You know what I'm saying? We got Dr. Dre up in here, man. Yeah, yeah. And Dre, let me tell you. What's good? You look amazing. Thank you, man. You look like uh, foul footage. You know what I'm saying? You know what <laughs> I appreciate when, it. Man, but I was telling Dre, I was like, Dre, man, like, you look good. Thank you, man. man I appreciate it. You what know, are you, know what you it doing? Is? You know what? I just got tired of taking better care of things I can replace. You know what I mean? You can't have a hot car and a hot house and get out looking crazy. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, So, you know, that was, man, my, that was my motivation. See, that was my problem, man. I wanted the hot car, and I was like, man, I just look crazy for a little bit. You know? <laughs> but you, you look good, man. And we just were talking off air. Dre, you just blew out 50 candles? Yeah, I did, man, a couple of weeks ago. February 18th, man. Oh man. I, I've crossed over, man. I'm, I'm halfway if I'm lucky. Hey, man, how, yeah, tell me about <laughs> it. How happy are you at, at, at 50, man? And, and, you know, Dre, we, we have cats that... Didn't blow out 20 candles, 30 candles. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How, how did you celebrate 50? Man, I uh, went out on the yacht, man. I took my fam out on the Caribbean man, on a 240-foot yacht, and we had a blast, man. I went out there for about 15 days. Yeah, man. I didn't step foot off the yacht one time, man. Is that how you relax, though, man? Because I know everything is constant with you as far as, like, working and creating. Is that how you kind of detach yourself? Yeah, yeah, indeed. But it, it also takes a couple of days to really just decompress, you know what I mean? Right. And once I do, I'm there. And you say you never stepped off the yacht? Not once. Yeah, man, I was flying to Vegas on the Southwest one time, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was like, man, when I touch down, I got a book. I was like, man, I ain't coming out the room. You that's know what I'm saying? That, 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 that's just the, you know, you didn't get off the boat. You know what I'm saying? I didn't get out the room, man. So what, what is Dre working on right now, man? Do you have your hands in anything? Yeah, man, well, you know, we're finishing up the Straight Outta Compton movie, you know. Man. Me, Q, Gary Gray, we, uh, we're blasting off with it. And I'm really excited about it. You know, I was worried about it at the beginning. Why were you worried? What do you As mean? As a matter of fact, I didn't even want to do the movie. Really, though? Cube actually quarterbacked it. He went out and got the first draft of the script done. I read it and was like, okay, we can work with this. We can turn this into something. And then when Gary Gray got on board, that was it. I was in. It was it. Kind of, and when you think about a movie like Straight Outta Compton, you usually see movies, man, and it's like, okay, with the Buddy, Buddy Holly story. We weren't around. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. Like, there's cats that just know NWA. They they know each and every member of NWA. They remember those right. years. Were you kind of not hesitant on that? Like, man, people know the story. How do you guys tell the story? I, w I was just nervous about putting a blemish on our legacy. You know what I mean? Right, right, the story right. had to be told right. And um, it's an, it's incredible, man. It's um, I'm really excited about it. You know, we had our ups and downs with the filming process, but now... It's um, it's, the edit is almost done. Mm. We're working on music and what have you, and um, I think everybody's going to appreciate it, especially everybody from Los Angeles. Man, we had a conversation with Cube, and I was like, Cube, I said, man, was it crazy seeing yourself? And Dre, just knowing those times, was it crazy? Like, man, I live this. Yeah, man, you have no idea. It's just it was freaking me out sometimes. To yeah. be perfectly honest with you, I'm, I, I can go back to the day where um, they were shooting a scene where, where I meet my wife, and you know, we're both sitting on the set like, oh man, this is this is crazy. Damn, it's crazy. What are we doing? You know, <laughs> hey, man, do and do you and Cube? Did y'all have those moments where y'all sit down either in director chairs or whatever, and y'all look at each other like? Like, man, I remember this. Or, Absolutely. So when you watch the movie, like, if we're talking about 85 to 95, right. there was a lot going on during that time. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Why that particular time, man? And do you feel like, like, man, like, there were certain things that was going on, like the, the crack epidemic. Yeah, what was we got going all that with, in there. With the gangsterism. The you police know? brutality. Is yes, really, sir. You know, it's really a period. The period is between... Um, 86 and 96. So uh -huh. we couldn't stop the uh, movie until after the passing of Easy. I hear you. You know what I mean? So that's why we use that timeline. I hear you. Now, with, with Easy E, man, was it hard to actually do the Easy E parts? You know what I'm saying? As far as like, how did you want Easy E? to be symbolized. We, we wanted to be movie. we wanted to be as authentic as possible. Yeah. And there's a actor, um, Jason Mitchell, who actually plays Easy. He did an incredible job. I mean, there's a couple of times where I got a little emotional on yeah. set. You know what I mean? When yeah. when he's in the hospital and he finds out he has the disease and what have you, his acting was that great. Yeah. Goose goosebumps, you know what I mean? And that's what Q was saying, man, that with with each and every person, especially with Easy, that person had to have range. Yeah. Because you went from a person that was pretty much, you know, dope game, whatever it may be, all the way to making sure that you were able to carry that emotional. Yeah, indeed. And it's, it's a really tough job because we wanted all new actors. And the yeah. guy that plays my character, his name is Corey Hawkins. Mm -hmm. He was, I think, uh, one of... 
three thousand. No, he was um, it was four people picked out of three thousand to go to Juilliard. He went to Juilliard. He graduated, and he's that sick with it. You know what I mean? So that's what we really were concentrating on most. A, a great performance. Was he nervous? Do you think playing Dre in front of Dre? Uh, you know what? <laughs> Did you ever tell him, like, man, that ain't me? <laughs> You know what? Me and him had some conversations beforehand. We went out to dinner a couple of times, and I told him, listen, man, I don't want you to try to copy my mannerisms or the way I speak. I just want you to embody the character and turn it into, like, what you feel it is, and I'll let you know if you're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. So that made it that made him feel kind of, you know, a little more comfortable about approaching it. Dr. Dre, nothing but a G thing. Ooh. Yeah. All righty, now, take us through the recording. Like, what, what, what oh. was that moment like? What did that feel like when you guys were making nothing but a G thing? Okay, there's a story to that. The original version of Nothing But A G Thing was made to a, a, a Boss Gag song. I can't remember the name of the song, but Snoop was actually in jail, and I really wanted this demo done. So he called in, and I taped the receiver of the phone to the mic. Hilarious. And he's in, you can hear jail sounds in the back and everything. He's one, two, that whole thing. So that was the original version. I just happened to be at my mom's house going through records, and then I found this Leon Haywood, I Want To Do Something Freaky mm -hmm. To You, and thought that would make, make a better um, foundation track. So... Took that back, recorded the track, Snoop got out, and um, we just recorded this song at my house. It was a, a bedroom that I converted into a studio at my house. That's what this, um, the first half of the chronic was And made. what was Snoop like at that time when you guys were doing nothing but a G thing? We were just having fun, man. Really, though? Yeah, that's it. We were Did just having feel a lot like, of fun. Was he a guy that you had to push? You know what I'm saying? Because Snoop appeared shy. He appeared, nah, you know? Snoop, Snoop was not shy in the oh, studio. Okay. We didn't have to push him in the studio. He was, ready. he was ready for action. Did you know, man, nothing but a G thing? Did you know that you were making history at that time? I knew um, after a house party. I played mm -hmm. it at a house party, and everybody wanted me to rewind it and keep playing it. That's when I knew it was special. Man, I wonder where the... Remember the, the, the freeze frame on a little kid in the video? Yeah, yeah. That kid, where, where is that man at now? <laughs> <laughs> you know right, what I'm right, right. For those who don't know, uh, Phone Taps was created behind, pretty much, name-wise, the instrumental, you know, the firm phone tap. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, I've actually played every day, Dre, you know? So I've been keeping you a lot because people wouldn't even know who Dre was unless it was phone taps. Okay, all every right. Day, you know I, well, I, I really appreciate that, Thank big. you, brother. Thank, Thank you, man. man. Yeah. Thank you. Because we get people all, you know, and I'm going to do what I can for you until you get back on your feet. Man, just keep it up, man. I will. Yeah, you know man. what I'm saying? I need you in my life, man. Thank you, my brother. The Straight Outta Compton, what do you hope when people see it they take away from the movie? Uh, I hope they can, they can be inspired. That's that's That was the main word that we used when we went into this. We wanted to be inspirational. We want to show... Um, just the ultimate brotherhood, betrayal, you know, it has everything, you know what right. I mean? And we really we really wanted to get across, one of the things was how we feel about women, because there's a big misconception, you know, how much we respect our women and what right, have you, right, you know what right. I mean? So um, these were some of the things that we wanted to get across. Yeah. With the actual movie itself, Dre, when we get a chance to actually see the movie, and we do know the, the whole, we feel like we know the NWA story, you know what I'm saying? What's in the movie as far, and you were saying, you know, how y'all respect when what's, what's in the movie that we don't know? Well, I don't know how much I'm going to get into that. I don't want to uh, uh, put the spoiler alert out there. Yeah. The you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, the movie you know is coming I mean? out. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, like I said, it's just, I want to show, we want to show the heart of the guys. You know what I'm saying? The heart of the guys and everything we went through during the creation of the record and everything we went through before the demise of the group. Right, you know? right. Why was it so very necessary that, you guys let us see this movie. You know what I'm saying? Because this is something that, Dre, like, uh, Cube said it was in his head. I'm pretty sure it, something was in your head. It was never in my head. I didn't even want to do the movie at first. You know what I mean? I, like I said, I thought it would put a blemish on our right, legacy. Right. You know what I mean? So um, once we got in it, it started feeling good. You know, so I, I was on the set every day making sure, you know, Things were not not babysitting, but making sure I agreed with everything that was yeah. happening. Right. You know, and, and, and I don't know if this is a label, but I've heard perfectionist from being when your name is mentioned. Yeah. Did you feel like that also had to be in that movie? Because you, when you say I didn't want to blemish on it, yeah. So you got to make sure that your story is told. Right. A certain way. Right. And you got to make sure you tell it. Yeah, indeed. And there's only so many things you're going to be able to get across in a script. You know what I mean? It's just like some of these little intricacies that I needed to be there for, you know, mm -hmm. certain ways that he said things that that 
I may have had a problem with, you know. Man, the movie Straight Outta Compton, we're looking for that in August? August 14th. Ooh, August 14th, yeah. man. Is there a soundtrack connected to it? or? or, or? Um, I'm working on something right now, That's you know. I don't, I don't want to put it out there just shit and say that I'm definitely going to put it out, but I'm, it, I'm, I'm really feeling what I'm working on right now. Damn, that's crazy. Cause, uh, so you're talking about new music. Yeah. When I'm thinking straight out of Compton, which would would which would have probably been too easy for you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What's to go and grab Yeah, yeah, the rec- yeah. But I think records. this will be a record that's inspired by the movie. You feel uh, me? Hell yeah. Now, speaking of the movie itself, man, did you get a chance to actually speak with Easy e before Easy e passed? Like, yes, I did. What was your relationship? Yes, I did. We actually, I was so fortunate to be able to get on the phone with him and talk about... Um, maybe putting the N.W.A. back together, and we chopped it up about old times and what have you, and maybe not even two weeks after that, he was in the hospital. Really, though? Yeah, so the last time I actually saw him, he didn't know I was in the room. He was on life support, you know? So I just reached down and whispered a few words in his ear, and I think maybe the next day or two, he passed away. But you guys had a chance to just talk as as brothers yes we got a chance to rekindle it and like i said actually talk about getting in the studio again how was nwa formed um well nwa was formed just out of friends that got together and decided to make a group you know um i i wanted to get away from the group i was in the wrecking crew at the time you know what i mean so i was really trying to find a way to get away i didn't have enough money to go in and record i had a group that i was ready to record on and um i didn't have enough money so bam in comes easy you know what I mean? I knew he had money. He was out hustling. It's like, listen, man, why don't you come and throw some money into this music thing? You know what I mean? Uh-huh. So me and him got together, and the song that was written for this group just happened to be Boys in the Hood. Yes, sir. They were from New Jersey, New York, or something like that. They decided they didn't want to do it, so I talked Easy into doing the record. Man, you know? and Easy didn't want to be a rapper at first. He did not want to be a rapper. It took me a couple of hours to talk him into getting on the mic and just trying it. And know? everything was kind of like punching, like cruising yeah. down the street in my six four. All Stop. right, we got that. Yep, throughout the whole song, man, one line at a time. And Damn. then, then you see him form into the guy that we see as Easy E. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying. The same with Snoop. When I first saw Snoop. Snoop wasn't looking at camera, you know right, what I'm saying? Right, he, right. he was all timid and everything. Now Snoop looking at the camera, like, yeah, you motherfucker. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know? Right, right. But, but did you see, do you, do you, not just with the voice, do you see that in people, man? Because you have taken cats and you've turned them into household names. Well, of course it doesn't stars. start. Of course it doesn't start out like that. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just what I feel and what I like. And fortunately, you know. I've been able to be in the studio with these guys are genius as far as I'm concerned. You know what I mean? Snoop, Eminem, Cube, all these guys are genius as far as I'm concerned that have made me look good throughout my career, you know? Mm. Dre, explain to me, man, next episode. We're going to get into that, man. Like, okay. like the buildup of that record. You know what I'm saying? That was like when I first started Ooh. here at Real 92.3, that was the first record I played. Well, that record is just, it's a, it's a real simple record because the majority of it, well, the big buildup is a sample, you know what I mean? So we just had a bass player come in and play behind that, and we just replayed what the actual sample is. The guitar part, is it, it was simple. Hey, man, but that was like an anthem for me. It's always been. And then when I came here, it was a record that I was like, you know what? This is the next episode in my life. Oh, so it meant a lot. There and, you go. and now I don't know what the, my first records were, the first this, first that, mm-hmm. but I know now. With the new chapter in my life, if somebody said, man, what's the first record you play? I know that it was next episode. That's what's up. You know what all I'm saying? Right, so all right. uh, let's like, go ahead I and like get that. into it as we should. I just made it up, Drake. I just <laughs> made it up while you sitting here. How much Beats product is in your house? Do you wear Beats at the house? Um, I, I listen to the Beat boxes. You know right. what I mean? I, you know, I, Every now and then I put on the headphones if it's somebody in the room and I want to listen to something on my own and they're watching TV or something like that. But usually I like them listening to the music out loud where I can feel it in my chest. How you know? are you? E- I remember one time I was in the studio with you, Dre, and it was you and Exhibit. And you had the music subbing so hard Damn. that yeah. my eyelashes were vibrating. <laughs> and this is on everything, dude. I couldn't swallow. <laughs> now, here I am sitting down watching the best do his thing. Like, how many people would want to see Dre do this? Yeah, Dre, I got up and left. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It well, be- it's not like that all the time, Big. Usually, you just wanted me to leave. No, nah, no. Nah. Oh, okay. Sometimes I, sometimes I like playing it loud when I'm when I'm on playback. You know, mm-hmm. but a lot of times during the recording process, I just have it on the small NS10s. You know what right. I mean? So 
it's not it's not really that bad. So all your the time. ears are okay. You my ears are your fine. Ear. It's got to be because beats sound amazing. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Thank I'm you. just not Thank wearing them right that. now because y'all didn't cut a check. All right, man. We got Dre <laughs> in here, man. Y'all stick around, y'all radio. <laughs> Hi, my name is. Okay. All righty now. This is the first record that you recorded with Eminem. Yeah. All right. And so you 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 find this cat, you hear it, you get into a room with him, man. Like when you first hear Eminem over your instrumental for that for that particular record, what does that feel like? Man, it, it's amazing. You know what I mean? Because it's it's always refreshing to know that the artist that you're working with is going to enhance your track. You know, mm-hmm. it's something that you just kind of wait for because, and, and and working with him is crazy. He never lets me hear what he's going to say until he gets on the mic. Really though, yeah. So it, are there times yeah. when you push away from the board or something? You're like, oh my lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. My face has been in my hands on a numerous amount of right. times. You know what I mean? Has there ever been a line or something where you just like, man, we can't, or you just let him get? Nah, you got to let the artist go, man. You know what I mean? Damn. Yeah. yeah. So it's never been a pull. I won't ask you the line, but it's never been a time when you pulled them back or, man, like, man yeah, maybe. Yeah, we, right, right, right. We, we, we've had a couple of sidebars, you know what I mean? Like, oh, man, it's, this is, you know, this is pushing the envelope like here, you, you know? <laughs> man, I wonder what's pushing the envelope yeah, with Eminem know, with some yeah. of the stuff that we heard. We, we can like, talk about it off here. <laughs> I don't even want to hear it because <laughs> something happened. I don't even want to test it. 